One of the most exciting matchups in boxing is when two undefeated fighters put their undefeated records on the line. No fighter wants to give up their undefeated record, but when two undefeated fighters meet inside the ring, somebody's O has got to go. A lot is at stake in such matches, and the fight's outcome can significantly impact both fighters' careers afterward. So in today's video, we've carefully curated some of the exciting matchups in boxing when two undefeated fighters meet in the ring. On July 31, 2010, Russian Dmitry Pirov faced American Daniel Jacobs for the vacant WBO middleweight title. Pirov, who was making his American debut, came into the fight as a relatively unknown boxer to American audiences while sporting a perfect record of 16-0 with 13 of the wins coming by way of knockout. In 2009, the Russian prospect faced his toughest challenge so far in the person of former two-time world title challenger Kofi Jantua. Pirog scored a big decision victory over Jantua and claimed the vacant WBC international title. Then, in 2010, he scored two knockout wins over American Eric Mitchell as well as Estonian Sergei Melis. Jacobs, on the other hand, was the home favorite and had the overwhelming support of American fans. The former United States amateur champion also came into the bout with a perfect record of 20-0, with 17 of them coming by way of knockout. His most notable victory, however, was a unanimous decision against veteran contender Ishay Smith in 2009. Jacobs returned in 2010 with two knockout wins in both of his fights, heading into the title bout with Pirog. Let's do this. Both fighters were in equal strength and skill as they engaged in a competitive bout from the opening round. Martinez beat up Kelly Pavlik to clearly become the number one middleweight and the legitimate middleweight. And a big right hand facer, I think, in his pressure, I think he's developed a little respect for Dimitri at this point. And he's realizing that he's going to create a slight problem because it's oh, oh, not oh, oh, that oh, very well. Well, the first thing everybody who has seen him says about Dimitri Pirog, and this was no, he's a guy who bends at the waist, has a lot of movement, and he has watched American fight right now. He's, he's not having this. He's not found a way that his upper body movement is, is really creating a problem. Pirog had Jacobs in trouble in the second round, but Jacobs managed to stay on his feet and fought back. I was going to say, but he's trying to figure out a victory strategy for Jacob tonight. That's a good body shot with a left hand by Perot. Right now, Perot's the aggressor earlier in the fight, and he landed a big right hand here in the second round that has Daniel Jacobs. You know, there's an improvisational quality to what Perot does. Jacobs made a comeback in the third and fourth rounds. Oh. Floyd Mayweather Jr. was over there neither. You're fighting somebody. Right hand by Jake to land a power left hand out of this stance, then out of his conventional stance, Emmanuel. I don't suppose Perog is of Jacobs going down the stretch. Well, I don't think he's ever had this type of a pressure of that for the guys coming in very difficult pressure too. Not a straight line pressure. Well Jacobs biggest win was in August ago against TJ Smith. E. J. Smith, much older than Perog, not nearly. By the fifth round, he was leading on all the judges' scorecards. But during the first minute of the fifth round, this is what happened. Oh, I don't think it was oh down goes Jacobs oh, on a perfect right hand. Right on May be that. Five, over. No oh, way. Oh. Robert Bird won't even finish the kids' his arms, and Jacobs is gone. Oh, oh, oh. On a knockout by Perog. But you said it, Emmanuel. He's never seen it like the opponent with whom he was in there tonight. And Dimitri Perot from Sergio Martinez, the legitimate middle. I doubt it. I have to see it, Perot. Perot is going to be. Perog caught Jacobs with a big right hand that sent him crashing to the canvas to become the new middleweight champion. But, alas, the knockout had already been scored. But look at the body movement of Perot coming in fight with a guy like him. What a cagey, scary yeah. athlete he is. Fights like an old veteran. It's an style. All three judges had Jacobs up three. Middleweight champion of the world, 
from Russia with love, Dmitry Piro. After the victory, Pirong successfully defended the title three times. In his third title defense, he scored a wide decision win over Nobuhiro Ishida. Pirog was set to face WBA and IBO middleweight champion Gennady Golovkin in his next fight. Unfortunately, he suffered a serious back injury that never went away during training, forcing him to retire prematurely from boxing with a perfect record of 20 wins and 15 knockouts. Jacobs made a comeback win with a knockout win over Jesse Orta, but he was diagnosed with bone cancer in 2011. Fortunately, Jacobs fully recovered from cancer and returned to the ring nearly two years later with a first-round knockout victory over Josh Luteran. In 2014, he won the vacant WBA regular middleweight title with a fifth-round knockout win over Jared Fletcher. He defended the title successfully four times before losing to Gennady Golovkin in 2017. Steadily. He returned to his winning ways with a wide decision victory over Luis Arias and won the vacant IBF middleweight title with a decision win over Sergei Derevianchenko in 2018. Derevianchenko, he needs the bell, he needs to regroup. Jacobs there as Derevianchenko tries to. However, he lost the title to Canelo Alvarez in a unification match in 2019. Jacobs currently has a record of 37 wins and 4 losses, but Pirong remains the only fighter that has stopped him by knockout to this day. On June 11, 1982, undefeated WBC heavyweight champion Larry Holmes defended his title against undefeated contender Jerry Cooney. Holmes, who was making the 12th defense of his title, came into the bout with a record of 39 wins and no loss. In 1978, Holmes shot the world by defeating the hard-hitting Ernie Shavers by a lopsided 12-round unanimous decision. With the win, he became the number one contender for Ken Norton's WBC Heavyweight Championship. Later in the year, Holmes defeated Ken Norton by a split decision to become the new WBC heavyweight champion. Larry Holmes, has done it. Larry Holmes went on to defend his title against several notable challengers, including Ernie Shavers, Mike Weaver, Trevor Burbick. Leon Spinks and Muhammad Ali, among many others. Jerry Cooney, on the other hand, made his professional debut in 1977, a year before Holmes was crowned the WBC heavyweight champion. Although he came into the bout with a perfect record of 25-0, most of his wins came against a host of unknown journeymen. However, Cooney got himself into contention in 1980 by fighting against top contenders Jimmy Young and Ron Lyle, both of whom he defeated by knockouts in the early rounds. It's all over. The Can Lyle hang on? 45. The turning point of his career was when he defeated former world heavyweight champion Ken Norton by knockout just 54 seconds into their contest. Nevertheless, Cooney did not fight again for the next 13 months while waiting for a title fight with Holmes. Despite his relative lack of professional fighting experience, Cooney fought bravely against Holmes. Oh, 
But in round two, Holmes dropped him briefly to the canvas. Lots of movement. A good blow by Holmes. A good right. And all right, another angle. The right getting in cleanly. The left he had held. The right went down. At Acuna's right went down. He dropped it after Holmes had had his left. <laughs> Cooney came back well in the next two rounds, using his powerful combination effectively. And the left got into the belt. A good right by Cooney in the fight. Second round. Holmes knocked Cooney down. Did it with a right. At the end of the sixth round, Larry Holmes landed a right hand, but Cooney managed to stay on his feet. Saying he can only fight with the left. Cooney, Cooney getting it now from Holmes. For a moment, looked like Jerry might go down. Holmes is really laying it all over. Cooney is not in good shape. Suddenly, a Holmes attack. Holmes and Cooney fought closely from rounds 7 to 10, trading punches in mid-ring. Could sense that he had heard him, but there's Holmes with the right with Cooney. Some of those Cooney blows, he's gonna cut the corner of Cooney. Oh, good right by Cooney, good right! After the 10th round, however, Cooney was exhausted and was barely doing enough to remain in the fight. Cooney also had three points deducted from his score for low blows, thus giving Holmes the lead on the scorecards. This has some of the aspects of Rocky. The courage of Jerry Cooney, I'll tell you that of the 10th round, and who said Cooney didn't have stamina? That's the way for Holmes to get hurt. The pursuer, Holmes, the pursuer. The hook on, the hook. There's the right. Oh, good. Pair of blows. Larry now trying the bounce, trying the moves. In round 13, Holmes floored Cooney with a barrage of punches. Sloppy because both men are tired. And Holmes trying to tee off and doesn't have the strength left. I don't think they're not. Oh, Cooney got back to his feet immediately, but his corner stepped in to save him from further punishments. Victor Valley, the trainer, is in the ring complaining because he thinks the referee has stopped it. And that's precisely what he has done. It's over. Holmes had the strength left to finish off Cooney. It was clear that he was peppering him almost at will. Jerry finally could take no more. He need not be ashamed. He's just a kid. Didn't have that many fights. 25. Larry Holmes. Following the loss, Cooney never regained his passion for fighting. He fought sporadically until 1990 when he faced George Foreman, who knocked him out in two rounds and Holmes, however, was heavyweight champion until he lost to Michael Spinks in 1985. He retired briefly after he lost in a rematch against Spinks in 1986, but made an unsuccessful comeback attempt to challenge undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson in 1988. Tyson defeated the former champion via knockout in the fourth round. Then, after another brief retirement, Holmes made repeated comebacks to challenge for the heavyweight championship, but he was unsuccessful in three different attempts. 
He finally retired in 2002, having won a total of 69 matches with six losses. On December 8, 2007, Floyd Mayweather defended his WBC welterweight title against Ricky Hatton in a bout billed as undefeated. Both fighters came into the bout with a combined record of 81-0. Hatton was the lineal champion at light welterweight and he was unbeaten in 43 fights. He won several regional titles on his way to the top of the light welterweight division winning the IBF title against Costa Zoo in 2005. It's over. It's over. And Hatton Later that year, Hatton defeated Carlos Mausa via knockout in the ninth round to unify the WBA light welterweight title with his IBF title. Then, in 2006, Hatton made his welterweight debut against WBA champion Luis Colazzo. He won the contest via a unanimous decision after 12 rounds, thus becoming a world champion in two weight divisions. However, he returned to the light welterweight division in his next fight against IBF champion Juan Urango in 2007. He defeated Urango via a unanimous decision to become the new IBF champion. Later that year, he defeated Jose Luis Castillo inside four rounds to set the stage for a super fight against WBC and lineal welterweight champion Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather came into the bout with a record of 39-0, having previously held world titles in five different weight divisions. Conduct on both the fighters and the corner man, you understand? Give me a clean fight. I'm bringing back a man's at all times. And remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. Hatton came out strong in the opening round, causing trouble for Mayweather with a jab that knocked him off balance. When you come inside, that's one part of it. His constant pressure prevented Mayweather from doing any serious damage in the early rounds. Even if he loses a point or two along the way. In round three, Mayweather opened a cut above Hatton's right eye as he began to find his range with precision. And Hatton walked through that one. He timed two of them. I don't know, Dave, if he walked through it or whether he felt that because he caught him with two real That's fuck all, yeah? That's fuck all. That's what you got. Listen, still the same, still the same. He the pressure, Floyd Mayweather. And with a crashing with both hands now, showing the hand speed. That's one of the great defensive tactics that this kid did throughout his career. This is an they move. He's had to try to catch up with some clean shots. You know, the pre-fight build-up, there's a lot too. The back and forth that's been going on building up to this fight. Best fighter in the world. He could be outside. Davey has a given grounding general Sheffield fight. There's the body shot. Double jab, make the opponent take it away. It ruins all the momentum. Body shots now being landed. Oh, this Floyd turning it up under the notch now. Mayweather, Mayweather continued to pick Hatton apart gradually and was ahead on all the scorecards coming into round 10 when he floored Hatton twice to retain the welterweight championship. The turnbuckle and he's very, very wobble. A left hook came like a bolt out of the blue to the seven and eight. His eyes are clear, but his legs aren't there. His legs are still not there. Floyd knows it. This is the beginning of the end. Well, you won't let him off. Down he goes all over. The fight is over. Floyd Mayweather has stopped Ricky Hatton in the 10th round to retain the WBC and Ring Magazine welterweight championship of the world. And he's made a statement in boxing. The winner by technical knockout at 135 of round number 10 and still undefeated. The WBC welterweight champion, Lord Money Mayweather. Hatton won two comeback fights in the light welterweight, but lost against Manny Pacquiao by a second round knockout in 2009. After a three-year hiatus from boxing, 
Hatton returned to the ring in 2012 to face former welterweight champion Vyacheslav Senchenko. He lost by knockout in the ninth round, prompting him to announce his final retirement with a record of 45 wins and three losses. Which of these fights is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to never miss another interesting update from this channel.